How's it going everyone, it's Harvey from Mother Sponge 1000 and in this video of course we're going to continue talking about Hurricane K and determine the impacts you will experience along the Baja Mexico coast as well as the southern coast of California where you could potentially see direct impacts and tropical storm conditions along the coast of California. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more with the lake Connor. So let's begin by taking a look at the current water vapor imagery and we do see a lot of convection happening right around the center of circulation, however we do see some dry air in training the center of circulation which is the reason why it didn't strengthen as much as anticipated and it does seem like it's going to strengthen much if at all as it continues ahead for northwestward because it's now entering the it's pretty much now entering the border between the 80 degree sea surface temperatures and the below 80 degree sea surface temperatures at this time and of course water temperatures will be too cool for this to strengthen as it heads further northwestward but it's still a 100 mile power storm it's still category two so it's gonna take a while for this storm to completely weaken and it likely won't weaken enough to where california won't experience impacts because it seems like it's gonna maintain its strength at least tropical storm force strength by the time this reaches southern california and even the northern coast of baja california so you still should experience impacts despite the fact that this storm would be weakening but we do see that there is a lot of there are a lot of clouds drifting the north as a result of an upper level high it's dealing with a little bit of wind shear but not much to completely disorganize it it's dealing with a little bit of dry air which has been inhibiting it from really strengthening as much but it's still a strong storm and you still should experience potentially major impacts along the west coast of Mexico and potentially up as far north as California as well. Now, taking a look at the sea surf temperatures, you see that the eye is located right around here, pretty much like I said, on the border between the where the sea surf temperatures are below 80 degrees and above 80 degrees. And as soon as it enters the cooler waters, pretty much the strengthening process will end there, but it's still going to continue to maintain its strength as it heads for a northwestward. Now, taking a look at what the computer models are stating and the GFS model is still persistent on bringing this storm along the coast and potentially making landfall sometime tomorrow late tomorrow um, along the west coast of Baja California so you need to prepare for potentially major impacts as you could easily see a uh, um, category two like conditions along the coast of Baja California along with extremely heavy rain and a major flood threat and if I were to continue to move forward we see that the storm is pretty much going to hug the coast and come very close to Southern California where I measure the distance between that where the eye is located and San Diego and it's literally only a 50 mile um, there, the eye is pretty much only 50 miles away from San Diego, so there is a possibility you will experience tropical storm force conditions right around the extreme southeastern portion, I mean southwestern portion of California. And of course, flash flooding, I'd say, is likely, especially in the desert areas, because it doesn't take a lot of rain in the more dry spots for flash flooding to occur, because a lot of these places in and around the Southern California desert, they only receive typically around three to five inches of rain per year. And you could experience that in just one day with um, Hurricane K or what will likely be Tropical Storm K at this time. So flash flooding is likely especially right around desert regions and you need to prepare for the possibility of flash flooding maybe around san diego if if um heavier squall lines do move through which is certainly a possibility and of course there is an enhanced wind threat with this if i were let me actually zoom in um to the eastern pacific so you guys get a better um, view of how strong the winds will be. We do see that the winds will be fairly strong where winds could easily gust over 80 to 90 miles per hour as this approaches the west coast of Baja, California. And as this approaches San Diego, believe it or not, you could experience wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour as a high wind watch is in effect for um, San Diego County and surrounding areas. So there is a high possibility that 
um you will experience damaging winds make sure to take those loose things inside if you live right around um, the San Diego area because they could easily blow around in the winds and unfortunately this strong wind should enhance uh, uh, the wildfire risk and um, in fact spread it and we do see this still maintains its strength by the time this reaches Southern California still a tropical storm and it's very very close to the coast of California which is very surprising because we it's very rare for a tropical cyclone to move this close to the coast of California with um without completely weakening now um, taking a look at what the European model is saying, the European model has been leaning more towards the northward track over the past several runs, but still wants to take it a little bit further westward than the GFS model. But the current, but the good news is that now the European model and the GFS model are fairly close when it comes to their model guidance. So it seems like the forecast is pretty certain that Southern California um, will experience heavy rain as well as at least some gusty winds and higher surf where you could see wave heights up to seven seven feet along the coast which is certainly something you don't want to exp um, experience and you want to stay out of the water during a scenario like this because of course the rip current risk is very high and you don't want to risk um, ever getting swept being swept um, to get swept away by a rip current because that that could easily take someone's life and it's unfortunate because it's one of the most av um, avoidable causes of weather delayed deaths in the United States just don't go in the water at all just to um, just to be safe um, but we do see that this storm will still maintain the strength and we're going to see wave heights as um, high wave heights as a result of this all along the California coast um, so at this point the impacts are pretty certain that California at least in some areas will experience localized flash flooding um, stronger winds so make sure to prepare accordingly if you especially live around the desert areas of California as well as the San Diego area in terms of areas for a northward maybe closer to the Los Angeles metropolitan area, I'd say the impacts will definitely be, uh, um, there will be definitely less impacts since it does seem like the storm will move that far up north for Los Angeles to experience any, any more direct impacts, but Los Angeles could still experience heavy rainfall out of this and potentially uh, gusty winds at times. And of course, the rough surf will still be there along the coast, but just not to the magnitude as let's say what well, San Diego and, uh, um, and the um and though the cities right along the Mexican border will experience so definitely keep that in mind throughout the entirety of San Di um, of San Diego and the Southern California in general now I'm um, saying look at what the ensemble members are stating at this time um you um we do see that the GFS model has now sh um the spaghetti models have now shifted further to the east where this would um more likely make landfall somewhere along the Baja coast um of Mexico and of course um, and of course California will get more involved in this scenario and we do see that with the European model while the European model still wants to steer this a little bit further westward it's still it's still more than close enough to bring almost direct impacts along the west coast of Mexico where we still could see a landfall um, right around the central portion of Baja California and of course California will still experience impacts despite this if even if this storm does take this further westward track like the European model has been leaning towards over the past several days so still expect heavy rainfall and flooding rain in California at the very least now um, in terms of how much rainfall we do see that a large portion of California over the next five days should at least experience around one inch of rain but we do see that just to the east of San Diego you could experience a lot more than that especially in the higher elevations of California and a lot of this rain includes the desert areas which is definitely concerning because like I said it doesn't take a lot of rain to cause flash flooding in the more dry areas of California and Arizona especially right Right now where you're under a severe drought so you if you live in a flood prone area or live in the anywhere close to a body of water or what would be a body of water then you need to um, take precaution because flash flooding is certainly likely and along and there is that possibility with a high wind watch in effect that you could experience wind gusts up to 50 to 60 miles per hour so that's something 
you don't want to play with, um, you don't want to mess around with, and you need to take seriously right around um, Southern California. Now, I'm um, taking a look at the um, at the surface um, at the wave height forecast because that's gonna be another big threat associated with Hurricane K as it continues to move northward. We do see that the wave heights, while they will weaken as this moves further northward, we still see wave heights right around um, close to 10 feet, right around the center of circulation, which is still very high. And we do see that this approaches the Southern California coast. So you definitely, um, as Hurricane K continues to move northward, just make sure to stay out the water because the risk of a um because there's a high risk of rip currents at this time and you don't you definitely don't want to um risk your life just to experience the very high wave heights you um just make sure to stay out the water because the rip currents will be life-threatening so definitely keep that in mind throughout southern california and in terms of the wind map we do see that of course the winds will weaken as this moves northward but um southern california i'd say you'll experience sustained winds right around 20 to 30 miles per hour with wind gusts up to 50 miles per hour in some localized areas especially if you're closer to the Metskin border so um definitely make sure to uh, bring all those very lightweight items inside because those could easily be projectiles that could damage your or other people's properties so uh, make sure to take precaution regarding the high winds that are expected throughout Southern California and unfortunately this could enhance the wild um, this could enhance the spread of wildfires which is definitely a major concern and you're probably wondering how is that possible when we're gonna see so much rain and the potential for flash flooding well the, um, the rain won't necessarily be enough to really uh, prevent um, these blazing wildfires from stopping so the wind will only enhance and spread the wildfires which is definitely another major concern as hurricane k continues to move northward um now take a look at the future cast radar over the next several hours to see when you should expect the rain so uh, moving forward you see for thursday it should be primarily quiet for southern california we could see uh, some isolated showers as early as thursday afternoon but nothing major it should be cloudy for a lot of um, Southern California, but um, also we could see the temperatures rise, rise a little bit more for San Diego just before Hurricane K or Tropical Storm K comes around because it's gonna bring a strong easterly wind which will bring that warm desert air closer to San Diego and keep that cool sea breeze from the Pacific away from San Diego. So the temperatures should rise close to 90 around San Diego, which is definitely very hot um, compared to what you even what you've been experiencing over the past several days and we should see the first squall lines move right around the san diego area by friday morning and it should continue on all day friday into friday night as well and we should even see some isolated thunder showers move through san diego um, on saturday and a lot of southern california where the flash flood risk is high so make sure to stay prepared um all throughout southern california now so you look at my forecasted um, strength and projected path forecast, I am expecting this to, of course, weaken, but you still see that Friday afternoon, this still is close to hurricane status. So you could easily experience some of the stronger winds and waves associated like you would with a hurricane. I did take California out of the cone of uncertainty, but still should come close enough to where you'll experience likely tropical storm-like conditions. So make sure to stay prepared um, all throughout Southern California because this is a very rare scenario, but you still could experience um, potentially uh, major impacts associated with Hurricane or Tropical Storm K as it moves northward. But anyways, guys, I think guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. I hope you guys all have a great day.